Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about the induction of labor, and this is the second part. Previously, in part one, I have been discussed with its indication and contraindication. In which all condition we can perform uh, the induction of labor, and in which all we can avoid it. So, I have given the link of that video in description box below, so you can go through with that video once you watch this video. So, before induction of labor. we must check certain parameters related to the cervix because uh, we must ensure that the cervix should be ripened first and what is cervical ripening it means uh, there are certain changes happen in the cervical tissue level uh, because of some proteolytic enzyme the collagen gets break down and the cervix become more soft pliable easily bend it can be effaced easily can be dilatable so these all changes should be happen priorly before we induce the labor so this all changes will see in scoring system and that scoring system is called bishop scoring this bishop scoring is prescribed by edward bishop in 1964 where major changes uh, will check priorly before we induce the labor related to the cervix so cervical dilatation we must check in the scoring uh, its effacement its position its consistency and the station of fetal head in relation to the ischial spine these five parameters must be check in uh, bishop scoring and uh, in modified bishop scoring the effacement is now being replaced by cervical length that is uh, measured in centimeter that we'll see later so for all parameters will score from 0 to 3 0 means this is the least score and 3 means better outcome so uh, the first parameter is cervical dilatation so suppose through pv examination we found that the internal os is closed it means there is no dilatation then will score 0 and if it is dilated about 1 to 2 cm then will score 1 if it is 3 to 4 cm dilated then will score 2 and for more than 5 cm dilatation will score 3 it means the cervix is adequate it is good dilated and through that we can induce and the fetus can come out so the maximum score is 3 which is good the second parameter is cervical effacement the how much the cervix get effaced how much it is take up and merge in lower uterine segment how much the length gets reduced okay so if the effacement is 0 to 30% we measure in percentage effacement so if it is 30% effaced 0 to 30% effaced then will score 0 it, that means the cervix is not that much effaced and it is not take up uh, that the fetus can come out so from 40 to 50 percentage we can score 1 and from 60 to 70 percent effaced cervix we can score 2 and if the 80% cervix is get effaced 80% and more than that then will score 3 that is uh, it is good effaced okay so the score is better in 3 the third parameter is cervical consistency so if the cervix is uh, very firm through pv examination if we found that the cervix is hard okay it is not soft the collagen fibers are not broken up so it will firm then will score 0 if it feel medium not that much hard and soft then will score 1 and for soft will score 2 and the 2 is highest score in this uh, parameter it means the cervix collagen are broken up and it feels very soft it is after this uh, changes the cervix can easily dilatable so the cervix is soft and uh, will score 2 and the fourth parameter is the position of cervix so through pv examination where we found the cervix in relation to vagina so if uh, through pv examination our fingers bend posteriorly then will score zero it is not good outcome and uh, if through pv examination we found the vagina and cervix in same alignment that is in midline will score one and if through this uh, the cervix is more anteriorly bended anterior position have good outcome so for anterior position will score 2 so in that also the maximum maximum score is 2 and the last parameter is the fetal station 
uh, and that we check in relation with the ischial spine. So ischial spine is the part in ischial bone. So if the fetal head comes at the level of ischial spine, uh, we write station zero. And whatever uh, the level is above the ischial spine will record in minus. And once the fetal head comes down from this ischial spine, then uh, we measure in plus uh, markings. Okay. So uh, if we get score minus three, it means the head is three centimeter above the ischial spine, then we'll score zero. If it comes two centimeter above the ischial spine, uh, it means minus two, then we'll record uh, one marking. And if it is at the level of ischial spine or just one centimeter above, then we'll score two. But if it comes below the ischial spine, one centimeter or two centimeter, uh, that is plus one or plus two, then we'll score three. So three is maximum score in this fetal station. So these are the important five parameters that we must priorly check before we induce the labor. So cervical dilatation, have maximum score of three. Uh, effacement, have maximum score of three. But consistency and the position of cervical uh, canal have maximum score of two only. And the station of head have score of three. So overall, the marking goes maximally up to 13. So in modified Bishop score, I have mentioned previously also that the effacement is replaced with the length of cervical canal. So in that also, if we get the length of about four centimeter, then we'll score zero. And if the length is about two to four centimeter, then we'll score one. And if it gives one to two centimeter, then we'll score two. And this length is if uh, remain less than one centimeter, it means it is very thin then we'll score three. That is the maximum score. So the maximum score is 13. And if we found that the mother score is more than six, then it is favorable for induction of labor. Okay. But if it goes less than six, then it is not favorable for induction. Then in such cases, we can give some cervical ripening agent to mother, uh, thereby the cervix get ripen up. And then afterwards, we can give induction method to induce to initiate the uterine contraction uh, in the mother. Fetal fibronectin is also a very good indicator and marker for successful indication of labor because this is the glycoprotein that present in between the amniotic sac and decidual lining. So suppose if cervical dilatation happens or if acement takes place, then this fibronectin can come in the vaginal root. And if we take a swab from vagina, then we can found that fetal fibronectin. So suppose if values go more than 50 nanogram per milliliter, then it indicates that the labor, uh, the induction of labor could be successful. So here in this lecture, we have seen the various parameters related to the cervical ripening that shows how much cervix is prepared before we induce the labor. And this we have seen in the scoring system that is called Bishop scoring. And in next third part, we'll discuss about uh, what all methods we can perform by medical and surgical through which we can initiate the labor process. Thank you.